package from China. No need for the Pandora box shell itself. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the Wicked Gamer and Collector. So in this video we are not going to talk about the Pandora Box Arcade Stick. No, we are going to talk about the Pandora Box Mini Portable Device. Because it's not like magic, but they did it. We have a Pandora Box inside a portable device. So let's talk about it today and let's see what we're going to get. And it is worth our money. But first... Let's talk about the box. But we always need to throw it, otherwise people are going to leave a comment. Because they want to see its pure wicked satisfaction. But the box itself, hmm, yeah there's not a lot of information on it. The information that we're going to get is for example this. Handheld game station. Enjoy a high quality gaming experience. And that's something we're going to find out if this thing is worth our money. We have in the naughty store or the game market, giving Wi-Fi functionality so we can connect to the Wi-Fi, we can update it and we can download games for free, yeah! We're having a 4000 mAh battery inside and a high resolution screen or an EPS. Alright, what are we going to get inside the box? I'm very curious, so uh, let's open it up. There is no handheld inside. Yes, I am wicked, but I'm not crazy, I'm not going to throw it my handheld. Alright, so there's nothing much in the box, I can see that it comes with them. Um, a USB cable, that's it. Not even an HDMI cable. The cheapos. Well, whatever. Let's grab the system itself. Alright, so let's talk about the device itself and what do I think of it. If you look at the design itself, I think this is more like a personal taste. It's not a device and thinking, oh man, what a really nice design. It's just a little bit basic, but I. I think if you buy the yellow and black version, it looks pretty nice. So in other words, it will not win, an, let's say, an award for the best looking portable device. So the design itself is just basic. That's the only thing I can say of it. So that brings us to the functionalities of the device. So let's talk about the joystick itself. What do I think of this? So this is more like this, let's say, wiggly joystick that you can find on some premium device like the Retro Game 350. Some say that it looks a little bit or feels a little bit like Nintendo Switch, but I don't agree on this. But the most important part is if you're holding the system like this, how does it going to play? I did try some games, uh, some fighting games I think it's very important, but playing, so let's say, Street Fighter, everything works like a charm. I think the joystick is very responsive and for playing it for a very long time it feels very comfortable. So if you look at the analog stick, yes for once I'm a big fan of it and I really like this design itself, what they're doing with this. You need to get used to it if you're playing adventure games so that's something you need to take in consideration. Alright, so that brings us through the D-pad itself and this is something, me as a big fan of the D-pad, I was very disappointed. So the first thing that I noticed with the D-pad itself, besides the form factor, is that when you're touching it, you can hear, I'm hold it on the camera, you can hear that there is more like a micro switch idea behind it. And I am more like the guy who really loves the D-pad, for example, with the let's say LDK, the long travel, that's again something that is more like personal, somebody loves, let's say the membrane D-pad, there's a long travel or short travel. Nevertheless, this is basically no travel, it's just instant click. And I know there is a new version out there and this is going to give us a new D-pad version, but here comes the problem. Even if you're having an other D-pad playing the games, I did try some Street Fighter again, some fighting games, and I must say, it's very responsive and I can do some moves. But again, this is something you need to consider. You need to get used to the D-pad itself. And again, and overall, I am not a big fan of this clicky D-pad. That is something that I'm 
no no not a big fan of it no let's put it this way and you will get some moves out of it you can play some adventure games but it's not the best way to go they messed it up so that brings us to the next part the buttons here i really like the configuration if you look at the six buttons because i play a lot of fighting games but when it comes to let's say the next generation or the newer generation like n64 sega dreamcast we're missing out buttons people so this is a big problem and if you look at the back there is nothing maybe in the future they will make an improved edition who knows who tell but for now when you're getting this thing you can't play a lot of the game simply because we're missing out buttons and that's something that i think is a really big of a bummer but let's talk about what are the quality of the buttons so normally we're having membrane buttons with a little membrane on the beneath the button itself but if you look at this version it looks very nice if you look at the response because of the click buttons i like it as you can see it's instant we don't have any delay or anything and it works like a charm so if you look at the d-pad i hate it the clickies d-pad i don't approve of it but if you choose let's say a membrane d-pad in combination with these clickies buttons that would be great all right so here at the right button we're finding the home button the home button is simply for when going we're pressing this it goes back to the main menu and even with some of these video games we can do a quick load quick save keep in mind that doesn't work for everything they basically messed it up for example findable error file you can save your game but with main you can't so a little example we're having this select over here and the start and here at the right right at the bottom we having a very tiny speaker that i'm not a big fan of but as you can see we can adjust the volume we're going to get this little bar over you can see how loud it goes let's put it at the louder settings i hope you can hear it but it's missing a little bit of a bass if you compare this with different portable systems a guy who loves to have two speakers in the system even if it's on the back i don't care just give me two speakers so that's something that i think that's a little bit of a negative part of this device that only having one speaker all right so on the top of the system we can find an hdmi mini output av out we having here the cf card or sd card but when we're going to exit this from the system now you can see nothing is happening over here. But when you're going to reboot it, you will see that it will not recognize the game. And here we have a micro USB for charging the system. All right, here we're going to give you a small example. I've pulled out the SD card over here. It will still boot up the firmware itself, but you will see when the thing is booted up, you will not see any games. That means that we can basically make a copy of the SD card if you want to use a big one that I will recommend. So this is what happens when you're pulling it out. Just wanted to show you and I'll make a separate tutorial if you can add more games to this device. So what is very cool and very convenient that this little Mi machine comes with 3.5 inch EPS screen. And as you can see with this angle it looks very well. But looking at the specifications of the Pandora Games Mini compared with the Pandora Games 3D, the full main board, you are going to get a mini device, but it has less power. So for example, this thing has a CPU that is a MediaTek MT6580A, a quad-core CPU that is running on 1.3 GHz. The GPU is a Mali 400MP2 and it's only having a RAM 512MB DDR3. So the display itself is a 640x480, 3.5 inch EPS and but if you look at this device it has less power so the performance for PSP for example on Dreamcast can be a little bit different compared with the full size mainboard. Alright so this is what we're going to get when powering on the system. So here at the left corner you can see if we're having a Wi-Fi connection the SD is insert. Here we have the battery life and the date. So if you have seen my previous video of the Pandora Games 3D, for example, the menu is exactly the same. So we're having the all list over here, where we have one big messy list. Categorized, you can scroll through the games, as you can see, it's got a very wide range of support, even for PC Engine, Sega Dreamcast. The only thing they messed it up with the arcade, we're having two lists, one with the final burn, alpha, and one for the main. And what is very 
annoying that the final burn alpha has the quick load quick shave and the MAME doesn't. If you're holding the home button and you hold it for a couple of seconds, you can see we're opening this menu and here we can adjust some things. But if you look at the setting menu, it's a little bit differently than compared with the full main board of the Pandora box. For example, we're having the handheld settings, of course, because it's a handheld. We can enter the Wi-Fi. This is purely for going into the Nadi store and getting some updates if they are online. We can add Bluetooth controllers. That's something where I can try out in a different video. Brightness, sound, sleep, and some other things you can change. We have in here the key settings. For example, we have the EO tester, all the things that we have with the original Pandora boxes. Enter game settings. What is interesting is that here we have different things like we can save it. Let's see what we see here. We have in the HD. The menu says it will drain extra battery. Scanline filter and we can disable it. So there are basically the same options we're having with the original Pandora boxes. And we're going to the Naughty Store over here. We can just try to download some new games. Right, so for once the buttons are mapped correctly. Alright, let's see. I prefer the analog stick if you're playing games like this. The bed is okay, it's just okay for a friendly game, but you know, I don't like it. Just give me just give me the analog stick. Alright, let's do another round. Yeah. Don't think so. But as you can see, PlayStation ROM runs like a charm. And I'm getting my ass kicked by Paul. Three dimensional games will not be a problem. Alright, let's see. There is a delay, as you can see in steering. I don't know what it is, but... What is yours? You can just very sensitive, but... I can tell you there is something going on here. The frame rate itself is not bad at all. No, there isn't delay. So the N64 beside the delay of the joystick, it was pretty smooth. Already showing you doing moves on this thing is playing this game on a totally new way. It is possible as you can see, but you need to learn to play with the D-pad itself. So an overall, it's not that recommendation. But as you can see, I can do moves. So happy that we have a very decent joystick. Let's see, I can do a sure you can something else. Yeah. So all the moves come out very in very easily with the analog stick. But again, the sound of this game is not bad. It's not bad. It's, it's I can live with it. Alright, so let's grab another game from the main emulator and let's see how the sound is. This is a game with great soundtracks. Wow, oh, it goes okay. Sounds good.
Sounds good, plays nice. my view angle oh, yes I can and I must say because of this thing is a little bit okay, let's, let's say go. it comes with less power and compared with the Pandora game 3D that runs most of the PSP games pretty decent this is not bad at all still have this interference in the sound but in general frame rate is not 6S, I can really notice it, but it's pretty playable, and I think for what we're going to pay and what we're going to get, we can't complain. Ah, a very great example, of course, here you can see it. Here we're having an FPS dip. Right, let's try some Famicom. Let's see how this runs. Sounds good. Can I skip the shit? Thank you. Ah, we have a lot of bootleg Famicom clone systems reviewed here on the channel. So I was expecting with a device like this we can play some Famicom like it should be. Alright, let's see. Let's play with the D-pad a little bit. Games like this can be played with a D-pad, that's not a big problem. Ow. Playing with the analog stick on a lot of games is fine, but yeah, the D-pad is just horrible. I'm not going to even freaking try it anymore. I don't know how, what do you think of this, but it sounds so weird. Uh, whatever. I think it's more something that I that I hear. No, not hear anything. But again, I really love to play with the analog stick. So happy that. All right, so let's play some Mega Drive. And we're going to play the Wicked style. And for the people who don't know, what is playing Enter the Beast with the Wicked style? It's very simple. We're going to play it like this. Let's see, why is the punch button? We're going to punch him in the face, kick him in the balls. Put the jump button. Wolfie, be nice. Beefcake moment. Oh yeah. Now we are beefcake. We don't need to punch him and kick him in the balls. We can just kick him in the balls. And this guy doesn't have a head, so we need to kick him in the balls. But, if you look at the emulation, hmm, not bad at all. And yes, we can quick load and we can quick save. Let's see, press C button. To save. Mm -hmm. Put it home. Load state. And if you mess it up, you can cheat a little bit. Oh, 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 oh. Alright, let's see. Now, what do I mean with take me on the right? Here it comes. 
All right, so let's choose some characters and uh, let's see how they run. It looks all good now. Uh, you never know what happens when we're going to play the game itself. Well, this sounds really good. Don't have, have any in weird interference. It can be me, but it looks like the screen's a little bit off here. Can you see this? And surprisingly, this game runs pretty decent. Doom, you're getting annoying. Alright, so I think you want to hear from me. What do I think of this? So, let's put one thing in front of all the other negative and positive things. So, they mess up the D-pad. I am just keep saying it. And if you mess up the D-pad, you mess up the system. That is my personal opinion about it. Because I'm a big fighting game fan and most of these games are unplayable with the D-pad. So, I'm forced to use the analog stick. But here comes a positive thing. The analog stick is pretty decent. Yeah, if you want to play with it, you need to you need to get used to it a little bit because it's more like this very wiggly joystick. But the buttons itself, we have only six of them. Again, they messed it up. But I must say, the clicky sound to it, I like it. I like it a lot. The save function, it's a great addition. Doesn't work for every system. The emulation is pretty decent with many of these systems. So for a um, device or a Pandora box that they put in a device, portable device and even with some let's say lesser power it's not bad at all I really like the design but it's more like a personal taste I really like this brick form it's not what we call it really in design but nevertheless this is what you're going to get let me know what do you think of this I want to thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell and become one of the wicked family and this means I will see you in my next video